how to grow your YouTube channel? Dave, tell me more. What's going on everyone? Dave K here today with how to grow your YouTube channel. Now you may be saying to yourself, Dave, what unique perspective are you going to bring to how to grow your YouTube channel? There's so many videos on it. Well, let me tell you just that. For one, I want to touch on the kind of lifestyle, vlog, kind of locality, travel, maybe a theme park vlogger. If you resonate with a lot of the videos that I've created, you may be interested in making a YouTube channel kind of similar to that. And I'd love to kind of speak to that point individually because I've seen so many videos out there about how to grow your YouTube channel if you're doing like how-tos, if you're doing something kind of analytical or businessy. And so I want to take a whole new spin on this in terms of how to grow your YouTube channel if you're doing something fun, how to grow your YouTube channel as a lifestyle vlogger or a theme park goer, a lifestyle travel person, whatever it is, just doing fun adventures. How do you grow your YouTube channel? Let me take you through some of my thoughts here today. So you may know if you're just starting off on YouTube or if you've been at it for a while, you may know that it can be a slow growth curve on YouTube when you're getting started. It does seem like growth on YouTube is kind of exponential, right? So you need to commit. You need to be willing to put in that time over the course of several of months and several of weeks or years, depending upon how your channel's doing. Every channel's different, of course, but to find exactly what you're going for, to find that success you're looking for. And you'll see the success will kind of ramp up and grow in that sense, but uh, it, it can be tricky to start off. Now let's dive into some of the core things to make sure that you're doing to be successful on YouTube. One of the first things that I've been hearing a lot of that you want to do that I really resonate with that I think is important is you want a good hook. At the beginning of the video, you want to make sure you're creating something entertaining and engaging to keep your audience with you. Again, if you're watching some of those other content creators who are making like how-to videos and that kind of thing, they'll start you off right with, here's what we're going to learn how to make today. Here's the kind of the business value of that or the value proposition, or here's how we're going to do it inexpensively or that sort of thing. But when I'm trying to entertain you and create an entertaining hook in that way, maybe I'm using some fun editing. Maybe I zoomed in on my face at the beginning of this video. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. Maybe I'm doing other fun, silly stuff like that. Maybe I'm saying something really funny or fun or engaging, showing you a little bit of my personality. Now, personality is another big piece of this as well. If you're going from an entertainment perspective, as opposed to focusing on the here's the how-tos and that sort of thing, you really need to let your personality shine. And this is something that I'm thinking to myself, I wanna make sure I'm bringing more and more of as well. And I feel like I do a pretty good job of it, but there's always opportunity to grow. And this is how my mind works, is there's always opportunity to grow in all of these buckets. Buckets. But which one do you want to focus on the most and the hardest in order to be where you want to be? But in terms of personality, you really want to let that shine through, right? If you're doing entertainment and creating entertainment content, a lot of people are going to be with you for your personality to be able to be excited and to be able to be entertained or inspired by you and who you are. And so again, thank you for watching this and being a part of the adventures with me. And I'm glad I can hopefully maybe entertain you and inspire you a little bit as well. Now, of course, you need that personality, and of course, you need that hook. But even before the personality and the hook, for people to even click on your video, there's a couple of different things you need to consider. Pretty important ones here. There's the title, and there's the description. But for me, what I think is most important, I'm not 100% sure, this is my take on it, everyone's got their own perspective. I think the thumbnail, the picture you see, is the most important aspect of kind of those different pieces to get you to be successful on YouTube. Because when people are scrolling through YouTube or when your video pops up in front of them, sure, they see some words, but everybody's got words. That picture is worth a thousand words, Dave. We know pictures worth a thousand words. <laughs> yes, the picture's worth a thousand words in that you can do so much with that little picture that could be so, so different from everyone creating videos around you. And you could make some extremely engaging titles, but in reality, at the end of the day, those are all just one of, I imagine, 26, nah, well, you've got letters and you've got numbers and you've also got kinda, what do you call them, symbols and stuff like that too. So maybe it's more than 26, like let's call it 50. One of 50 different symbols that can go in each one of those spots. Whereas with a picture, there's so many different colors. You can add to so many different positions with shading and with outlines and with boom. There's me and making faces. Or maybe you want to see what's going on in the background or those sorts of things. So those are all really important elements to consider 
as you're making your YouTube channel. What do you want to showcase in that thumbnail that gets people excited to click into that video, of course, in addition to that title and to that description. Now, don't get me wrong, the title and the description are very, very important as well. And if you go back, embarrassingly enough, to some of my oldest videos on my channel, you'll see they're titled, their descriptions, and even their thumbnails are quite, quite poor. And if you look at them, you're thinking to yourself, you know, how would you find this video, right? If you think about your title, how would someone find this video? Is someone going to search for this title? Is someone looking for this description? If this video popped up in front of me, that description was there. Would I want to go read, would I want to go watch that video based on the description that I could see? So you want to make sure it's also long enough that people can read something, not just like, hi, and then that's it, right? Or go click my whatever link. For me, I feel like that doesn't start off a description too strong, is go click my whatever link. Some people do it, maybe it works for some people, but for me, I'm not starting off with those links. Now, if you wanna see other ones of my videos, of course, you can check out my videos and see in that description, there's a bunch of links to a bunch of different playlists. And I think that's important that I have all those links in all of my videos in the description. And I, of course, have these cards that you'll see in that little eye icon in probably the upper right-hand corner, maybe not the upper left-hand corner. You know, wherever it is for you, there's cards, and you can see some of my other videos. And that's important as well, as it guides you to be able to enjoy other adventures that I share with you. Well, if you like this, if you like seeing my face here, maybe you like seeing my face over there as well. And then, of course, the thumbnail piece. YouTube does, and they've been getting much better at this, in my opinion, take kind of scenes from your video, like this video. They showed me three different scenes where I was like this or that or making some weird face like this that I could use, hypothetically, as my thumbnail. And as much as that's very kind of YouTube to do, I think that I can create a thumbnail personally, which is even more engaging with some text on it, maybe, that tells you a little bit what the video is about, or maybe not, depending upon the video. Maybe if I got some amazingly delicious food I wanna showcase, I'm gonna bring that up to the front, forget the text. Or maybe if this is all about the text, maybe the entire thumbnail is just text and it's telling you this is what we're gonna do. Or maybe there's some picture in the background of my video that talks about what I'm going on or in that picture in the background of the thumbnail that kind of talks about what's going on, kind of edit my face into that, which you've probably seen me do quite a bit. There's so many ways to be able to work with that in addition to what YouTube's doing of just taking that screenshot of the video. It'll come out in higher resolution. It'll maybe make more sense to more people because you can customize it and that sort of thing. So that's something to keep in mind. Now, I'm also thinking about potentially making a video on how to make a good thumbnail for YouTube, kind of taking you through my process, how some of that editing works for the thumbnail. Maybe we even at some point go through editing a video. But at least for now, talking about taking you through thumbnail editing. And let me know what you think on that. Would that be fun to see? So the end screens, the cards, the description, all that stuff is really important as well because it leads people to be able to continue enjoying your videos. It's awesome if you watch this video and you're watching it through and thank you for being a part of it and checking out all these fun facts that I have, but it also allows you to be able to enjoy some more fun facts from me. And the more videos you watch, the more watch time I have on my channel, the more YouTube says, hey, people like to watch this guy's stuff. Let's recommend it to more people since he has more watch time. So that's something to keep in mind as well. And that does lead some people to then say, hey, you wanna make sure your videos are longer. I've heard people say, oh, your video should be at least 10 minutes. And depending upon the video, sure, you can make it 10 minutes. Now, I, it, it may be logical for them to say that. I don't mean to contradict that or anything along those lines, but there are certain videos that I have that I make that I enjoy quite a bit that I think maybe you enjoy quite a bit as well, like those music videos, those music videos right there that are so much fun for me to do, but I'm not gonna make a music video that's over 10 minutes, right? I'm not gonna make a, most music videos over five minutes because it's a song and the song just doesn't last that long. So of course you've gotta make videos relevant and full of the content that's appropriate to your viewer. You know, Make sure you put everything that could possibly be useful in a particular case like this video into the video, but at the same time, not making it anything that's unnecessary or killing any time. I like to fill all those gaps where I'm not talking, for example. You you may have seen cut out in editing. And yes, I maybe need to work on trying to speak a little bit more slowly, and I've been working on that. Hopefully it's been getting better. Let me know what you think. And that's something to keep in mind as well. But again, communicating effectively and clearly and cutting out that downtime is something that I like to do to make my videos more engaging. And as you're building that channel, as you're thinking about 
These are the videos that are really hitting home with people. You want to think about your target audience. You want to think about the person watching this video. Dave, personally, wants to think about you watching this video right now. I'm thinking about you. What kind of video would you like to see? You know, right now I'm making this video because I know many of friends have said, hey, I also go to Disney World, I go to theme parks, or I also want to start a YouTube channel. And especially right now, with things kind of being slow and nobody's going outside, what can I do to get started? So I make this with you in mind saying, hey, I've been meaning to get started for a while. Yeah, what does Dave have to say on that? Oh, you know what? This is exactly what I've been looking for. Someone who says, here's how to grow your YouTube channel, but in the entertainment, in the vlogger, in the lifestyle space. So to be able to kind of think through maybe what the person watching is looking for, might enjoy, it's tough to do. This is a tough one, you know, because I know even with my videos, I have some hit and misses, you know. Maybe saying Disney Quest a thousand times isn't as fun as I thought that was. Like, come on, that was, that was fun, let's be honest. And I never would have expected 50 fun facts about me, part one, to do as amazingly as it did. So thank you so much for checking that out. If you haven't checked that out, you'll be able to, if you sort, at least at the time of filming, my most popular videos, that's on number one. Maybe this becomes a new number one, huh? Hmm? Who knows? We shall see. But definitely uh, something to keep in mind is what do people like to see on your channel? What do people not like to see so much? And then another thing to keep in mind, I talked about that consistency, right? How it can be a long process, takes weeks and months on end. You've gotta have the kind of grit and the hustle to get it done and just cre keep creating videos. And that also ties into a schedule. And it's gonna take a while, right? So you also need to have enough videos to engage people. People need to be able to go on your channel and see this and then that and then this and then that and be able to keep going. So you wanna keep in mind, what's a schedule that works for you? Is, is one video a month really often enough. I'm not sure if you're going to find a whole bunch of people coming to your channel if you're only putting out one video a month. So that's something to keep in mind as well. Now, obviously, I'm still trying to figure out what a good balance is for me as well, because I want to make sure I'm creating fun and engaging content, which is why I'm thinking about, hmm, maybe we're switching the, the topics a little bit so that we can continue to create fun and engaging content almost daily or maybe even daily and that sort of thing. But again, you got to find the balance that works for you. And I spoke a little bit about editing as well, how I like to edit out kind of those blank moments. I also edit that hook onto the front. For example, if I didn't film it first, let's say I'm going out and about and I'm vlogging and let's say I'm having a delicious, this vlog today is about a delicious dinner I had at Ohana. It was a great meal, absolutely loved it and yum. But maybe I didn't start with that delicious shrimp where I'm like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. But that was one really exciting part for me. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug that on the front in editing in addition to cutting out those kind of silent moments. Now, a lot of things do get cut in my videos. You may see bloopers at the end of a lot of my videos where maybe I've made some mistakes and that sort of thing just for fun. So you can see those at the end of a lot of videos. And so that kind of shows you some of the process of what the editing looks like as well. Cutting out the blank space, cutting those bloopers to the end, cutting that hook to the front, and things along those lines go into that editing process. But I do want to state yet again, it does require some time, requires some effort and energy and commitment to be able to create and to grow your YouTube channel. So that's something to keep in mind if you're going through the process. Make sure you're saying to yourself, is this something I want to commit this amount of time to? I have always wanted to have my face out there, be able to share some fun silliness with people, and entertain and that kind of thing. So for me, I think it makes a lot of sense and I don't ever see it kind of leaving my scope. Maybe the content type will change. Maybe I won't be going to theme parks. I'll be eating food or just chatting with you, maybe. But I never really see it leaving. But who knows? You know, you gotta know what works for you and who knows, things change along the way. If you see me in some Marvel movies instead, I don't know if I'll have time to make daily YouTube vlogs, but I guess we'll see what happens when I become whoever superhero they wanna make me. Let me know. Thanks y'all for being a part of the adventures with me today. What did you think? I want to know. New type of video. Are you a fan of the how to grow your channel on YouTube? Do you want to hear more about content creation, how to make a thumbnail, that kind of thing? Do you want to hear something else? I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. And if you made it this far in the video, shh, don't tell the others who didn't make it this far. If you made it this far in the video, I'd love to hear your favorite type of pie in the comments. Let me know your favorite type of pie in the comments below so I can appreciate you for watching through and also just to get a gauge of which pies are the best because this is, this is an important question. You, you really have to answer the question, what's the best pie? Thanks again for being a part of the fun with me. If you haven't already hit that subscribe button, what are you waiting for? Until next time, play on.